Good morning friends and welcome to the pre-market view. US markets were uh, good uh, on Friday as most of the economic data points that are coming out are quite encouraging. The only issue is uh, that of the sequester deadline which has come into play on 1st of March wherein the automatic spending cuts of about $85 billion uh, have come into effect and some compromise formula is being worked out. However, Eurozone continues to languish and we have seen a uh, cut of about 0.5 to almost about 0.75 across the eurozone markets and more importantly the data point which have come out be it unemployment data or even the uh, manufacturing data in terms of PMI uh, manufacturing index have been quite uh, weak across eurozone and uh, on the back of that we have seen that the euro has actually come down to almost about 1.30 and the dollar index has shot up to almost about 82 levels which is definitely not uh, positive from a flows perspective. And when we look at the Asian markets today morning, Nikkei is up about 0.5%, but we are seeing a lot of weakness in the Chinese market, uh, and they are down almost about uh, 0.5 to almost 1.5%. Particularly, the property stocks uh, have taken a beating as some measures have been taken by the Chinese authorities in terms of higher down payment and so on and so forth. Uh, in terms of flows, friends, uh, FIs were net buyers in the cash market to the tune of about 627 crore. In the index futures, there were sellers to the tune of about 283 crore and the domestic institutions were sellers in the cash market to the tune of about 46 crore. Back home friends, our markets which had already underperformed and it was weak, uh, managed to pull back a little bit but there is not much of a comfort and uh, what is important is what kind of next big queue that we are looking at and uh, yes, uh, March 19th RBI policy meet could provide uh, some kind of a trigger because the possibility of the rate cut has increased as we have seen that uh, the GDP data that came out was very weak at 4.5%. Even the auto sales numbers that came out uh, for Feb were quite weak uh, and that has raised the hope of uh, rate cut. But other than that, uh, we are not seeing any positive uh, triggers to look at. And on that note, uh, let me invite Sadhna to take us through important FNO queues, data and strategies uh, that we can have in the FNO markets. Good morning friends, let's have a view on derivatives. On Friday, the markets have started the session from flattish to negative note due to weak GDP data which came on Thursday night. After that, markets have started recovering as market participants got clarification from a finance minister on DTAA, that is double taxation avoidance agreement. As we have seen, around 14 lakh shares were added in open interest with significant decrease in the cost of carry indicating short positions were built up in the market on Friday session. On the options front, if we see 5,500, 5,600 put strike side seen a good number of activity. On call strike side, 5,700 followed by 5,800 seen a good number of activity. Overall, our bias for the market is negative and 5,800 may act as a good resistance. As we are trading below our VWAP of 5,800, so our lower range for the market is 5,650 and higher range is 5,800. For intraday perspective, one can go long on Ashok Leland with a stop loss of 23 and one can go short on Ultratech Cement with a stop loss of 1095.80 and Tata Chemical with a stop loss of 331.35. Thank you. Here are the important news and events that we are tracking today. First of all, Adani Enterprise has uh, set its flow price for the OFS at about 220 rupees per share, whereas the closing price was much lower at about 211.75. And in case of uh, MMTC, the government is looking at divesting about 9.33% stake uh, and uh, this would fetch the government close to about 300 crore. The flow price of the uh, OFS would be decided somewhere on March 12th. So watch out for some action in these two stocks in today's market. Ultratech cements some negative news as uh, the operations at the unit in Awarpur have been shut down due to a uh, work stoppage by workers, so some negative reaction is possible in today's market in Ultratech Cement. Jindal Steel and Power, the positive news as the company has increased the prices of some of its products by about 1000 rupees per ton uh, and one can go long on JSPL on the back of that with a stop of 352 and a target of about 370 to about 377. Jet Airways uh, is looking at acquiring about uh, 6 slots of uh, Kingfisher Airlines as the license of Kingfisher Airlines has been cancelled and we also had some positive news on the deal with Etihad uh, that Jet is pursuing right now. So one can go long on Jet Airways with the stoppers of 527 and a target of about 554 to about 564. 
Tata Communications, some uh, close sources have indicated that the company is looking at selling its uh, properties in Delhi, Mumbai and Chennai, which will fetch them close to about 2,500 crore rupees. So one can go long on Tata Communication with a stop loss of 219 and a target of about 230 to about 234. Tata Motors reported a dismal set of numbers for its domestic sales at about 61,998 which was down almost about 33% and has also indicated that they are looking at cutting the prices of both the Indica Hatchback and Indigo Sedan as uh, the company has not been able to uh, show any meaningful growth uh, in those, these two products. So one can go short on Tata Motors with a stop loss of 294 and a target of about 279 to about 273. That's it from all of us friends. Have a nice trading session and see you tomorrow at the same time.